Welcome, everybody. Prophet in the Spotlight. I'm your host, Brother Dan Goodwin. Today, I have sitting here in the studio with me, my friend, Brother Spencer. Hello. Brother Spencer Smith. Yes, sir. And you're from uh, Shepherdsville, Kentucky. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And uh, tell, tell us the name of the church again. We're at a Lighthouse Baptist Church in Shepherdsville, Kentucky, right south of Louisville, Kentucky. All right. And mm -hmm. I have been there a couple of times. Yep. I actually spoke there yep. once. My partner, Dr. Hiltabilly, you're sitting in his seat today. Yes. And yes. he has spoken there many times. Many times. He's been a blessing in our church. And the church is still okay? After We're still he's okay. Been there? We survived. I'm worried when he yeah. preaches somewhere. We, uh, we persevered through all that and all we right. survived. So, yeah. <laughs> he's a great guy, Brother Hilt uh, does a great uh, slideshow. Amen. He's got some good stuff. Yeah. He and I became good friends, and of course we started the ministry here. Mm -hmm. And we're tickled to death to have you here this week. Amen. And uh, we're going to be discussing uh, some prophet prophecy stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to talk about the Laodicean church age. Yeah, yeah. And I believe that's where we are right now. I do too. So tell the, tell the audience just a little bit about you first. What, what do you do there at Shepherdsville? Well, um, you know, I've been, the past 13 years of my life, I've been doing mission work in and out of Kenya and Uganda and uh, just trying to help national pastors uh, to reach their own people with the gospel. It's, been, it's really been a blessing. Uh, do you actually go there or are you doing that from here? I'm doing that from, I'm going back and forth what I'm doing. And I uh, try to raise money for projects here on the state side and then going over there having conferences with these guys and, and just teaching, training, working in the ministry over there. And uh, just this year, the beginning of tw uh, 2021, um, we, uh, we transitioned our ministry. I'm now director of Lighthouse Baptist Missions at, at uh, Lighthouse Baptist Church in Shepherdsville, Kentucky. So you have so, it all, not just, not just the Uganda not just, stuff. Not just Kenya, uh, not just Kenya. And uh, what we're doing, we're working in Nairobi, Kenya, and uh, working in Dominican Republic. And uh, just Which whatever. Which is uh, beside Haiti. Right, right? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's the same island, but half of it's Haiti, half of it's Dominican Republic. Yeah. And uh, we'll be working in the Dominican Republic there with a lot of ministries. Uh, Trying to just plant churches with nationals there. That's what we're trying to do. And, and the, we're going to be going in March there to do a conference with our, with our men there that on, the, uh, on the Dominican Republic side. Uh, just so much great opportunity to help start churches there and plant churches and reach people with the gospel. And that's what we're going to be doing. And so have been doing that uh, 13 years. But this year we just started with Lighthouse Baptist Missions out of our home church. And uh, planting churches with nationals is what we're going to be doing. And it's going to be exciting. I, I, I'm so thrilled about the opportunities we have. Uh, to do mission work out of our church. Be great. All right. Well, that's great. Mm -hmm. Of course, missionaries are the special forces of the ministry. They are. They are. Amen. Uh, very important there. So, um, now you have other things that you do. Yeah. Uh, you have a. Do you have a podcast? No, I, I have a, a YouTube channel that okay. we have run, and it's. What's the? How do they find that YouTube? Well, just channel? just type in Spencer Smith, and uh, you'll find us on YouTube there. Just uh, you know, of course, the thumbnail is me. And uh, the Lord has blessed. We've got 114,000 subscribers on there, and we're averaging about a million views a month on our channel right now. Wow! And it is a it is a blessing. We got people from all over the world that are emailing us saying that uh, you guys have really helped us, been a blessing to us. And uh, we talk about all kinds of uh, uh, religions. Uh, we talk about prophecy. We talk about end times apostasy, deception, really basically everything. And um, and that has been an awesome, awesome thing to see the hand of God move on that. Well, when a, did you start this and why did you start this? Well, um, you know, I started making videos just so I could report to our churches that support us about things going on in Africa. And then I realized the power of it that, you know, literally you can reach the world from uh, from your desk at home. Yeah. And I thought, man, this is amazing. And so um, just started doing research and things. And I'm always researching something. But I decided I was going to take my, uh, my research and put it into a book. And I did, uh, did with a couple of books. But also I wanted to put it in a video format. And uh, we, we, uh, we released a documentary in 2019, in February 1st, 2019, called Third Adam, which was uh, where I talked about the rise of the Antichrist in the world today and how all the religions were going to merge together. And, um, and so really, the third Adam, because they, they may not know what you mean, you're mm -hmm. talking about the Antichrist. The Antichrist being, uh, being declaring himself as God. Yeah. And so, you know, of course, you have Adam and Eve, the first Adam, Jesus being what the Bible calls the last second Adam. Second Adam from okay. above. Yeah, the uh, second Adam from above, okay. But the Bible calls him the last Adam. But also, there's going to be coming a man who's going to declare himself to be God. In 2 yeah. Thessalonians chapter 2, he's sitting in the temple as God. He will be the third Adam. And so that's why we call it third Adam okay. is to talk about the Antichrist. And I have watched a few of those. I've watched right. some of that. Amen. And uh, yeah. you, well, have, uh, you have a lot of stuff about music. And maybe in the, in the mm -hmm. program, we'll, maybe we'll touch on some of that as well. Love to. Music is mm -hmm. destroying us, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Music is a, um, is a gift from God. It can be used to edify or it can be used to destroy. Yeah. And uh, really, um, music is a, 
is evidence of a spiritual condition of a person. And there's a, there's a whole, it's very complex, um, and there's a lot of people have very strong opinions on music. <laughs> it's wild. Um, but, uh, but yeah, there's a, there's a lot of research we put into music, and we've used music to expose false doctrine yeah. in churches today. And, uh, and there's a lot of information on that we put out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've, I'm afraid a lot of our, most of our new music, uh, if you sat down and looked at the lyrics, there's no content. There's no depth no. to it at all. No, no, absolutely. It's chants just, and... Yeah, it's rep repetitive chants. Ooh, ah, uh, ooh, ah, uh, I love you. Ooh, ah, uh, ooh, ah. Uh. And everybody's like, man, that was amazing. Yeah. And I'm like, that was nothing. That, that really was nothing. And the problem, the, one of the things that I've done that kind of, I guess it ruined me in a sense, is I've read biographies of men 300 years ago. I've read the lyrics of these hymns being put out years, yeah. years ago. And compared to today, it's like, like if I were to use the Coca-Cola and Diet Coke example it that wouldn't even be, that wouldn't even justify it it's like you got coca-cola can't beat the real thing and then you have this so watered down thing that maybe maybe has a whiff of coke in it but it's it's so watered down you can't even call it coke anymore it's just it's it's a it's a imitation something yeah. and uh, and that's really where modern music is today but i think modern music is a symptom it's not it's not the problem in of itself i think it's a symptom of a larger problem and uh, that's what we try to talk about on our, on our channel. And we, yeah. really a lot of people have been helped. Well, when I was in Bible college, because I've pastored three churches, uh, but in Bible college, I, I wrote a sermon about music. Mm -hmm. It was the most, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. I, I was under a satanic attack as, yeah, I, as I'm sure. putting this thing together. Sure. And I have preached that in many places. Basically mm -hmm. a three-point outline. Every song, whether good or bad, has number one, has an author. Somebody wrote it. Yeah. Number two, it has a message. Mm -hmm. Now that message may be about Coca-Cola, may be stupid, mm -hmm. but it has. There's a message there. Yeah. And number three, every song has a power for good or for bad. Mm. And, yeah. Uh, and I, I agree with that. And I see our teenagers and our kids, of course, on our bus routes, and mm -hmm. I see them being being controlled by the Hollywood and the music. The music's bigger than Hollywood now. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Everyone's following these yeah. different. Michael Jackson is said to have had a billion to two billion people watch his funeral, either online or whatever. Wow. That's shocking to me. Wow. Because he's, Michael Jackson was not a good man. He's not somebody our kids should have been following. Right, right, sure. I mean, we could talk about him for the next half hour, but I yeah. mean, he's, he's not a role model for our, for our kids and no. our teenagers. No, definitely not. And, and, and look how, how life ended for him. Yeah. And, and that's sad to say that's how it is for a lot of the, Sure. Even the Christian musicians, I mean, look yeah. at their life. It, well, you know, and I'll tell you this, Brother Goodwin, most Christians today have bought into the lie that music is neutral, that yeah. music is all moral. But that's not the case at all. Music has an effect on your emotions. Your, your, it can affect you spiritually, physically, and emotionally. It, it affects all of your being. And, uh, you know, you never, you never see people ballroom dancing to Norwegian death metal, okay? <laughs> they, they, but you don't see people doing a mosh pit to ballroom music, classical music. You just don't see that. Well, i got to um, admit, I don't know what a mosh pit is. So. Okay, well, I'll just, uh, just, just trust me. And, uh, <laughs> you know, but, but, like, for example, when you walk into an elevator, okay, they're not playing rock and roll in that elevator. If they're playing any music at all, it's very soft, yeah. very calming music. And, and thus the term elevator music. Elevator music, yeah. exactly. And uh, or lobby music or whatever, okay. Just something calming and uh, yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that. You know, you go to the dentist; they're not playing. They're not playing crazy music at the dentist. They want you calm yeah. when you're sitting in that chair as they're torturing you, and uh, you know all that stuff. So I heard that fast food restaurants will have fast music. Fast they music. want you in and out of there. In and out. They want they want to move seats. They want to turn over tables. Yeah. Okay. It has an it has a, uh, an effect on you even if you're not. I mean, it's it's subconscious even in stores. They're, they they. Yeah. They want you in and out. They want you to spend money. Uh, when you go into a department store, uh, if they like like a Dillard's or something at the mall, they're playing romantic music because they want you in an emotional state. Because when you're emotional, you spend money, mm. and people don't realize that. Okay, there's a whole psychology to music, and to ignore. For th listen, the only people in the world on this planet that say that music has no effect on you emotionally, spiritually, physically. The only people on the planet who make that claim are carnal Christians. Yeah. Because even the rock and roll people all have their statements about what exactly. music is. Some well, there things was, that we won't mention on the air here, but uh, well, I mean, I'll, I'll throw one out there. There was a uh, the Rolling Stones. They had yeah. that song "Sympathy for the Devil." They quit doing it for years because every time there, there was a time there, there was there was a hot trick they had where every time they did the song, there was a fight in the audience and somebody got stabbed. <laughs> okay, so they quit doing the song for a while. Okay, 
And, and, and even Mick Jagger says, this music, something happens when we do that. We, we're, so we're going to stop for a while, okay? Yeah. But the only people in the world who claim that music is neutral are carnal, carnal Christians. Yeah. And uh, that's very telling. You know, <laughs> a lot of folks don't know this, but uh, of course I've written about 12, 13 books. A lot of people don't, don't see me sitting in my office at 2 in the morning or 3 in the morning sometimes. <laughs> I listen to music mm -hmm. when I write. Mm -hmm. I, there's certain stuff that I listen that moves me. Yeah. And helps, helps me write. Yeah. At least I hope it does. I mean, mm -hmm. people seem to like my books, but right. there's certain stuff that moves me. There's, there's other stuff that, there's, there's music that I'll hear that makes mm -hmm. me angry. I oh, mean, yeah. It makes me angry. Yeah, sure, sure. And, uh, yeah, well, so I would it definitely affect you. I'm on Twitter, and there was a guy that, uh, he's like a fitness coach, and he, uh, you may not know who this is, but he says, every time I walk in the gym and Ed Sheeran's being played, which is a love, love songs, he said, my squat goes down 45 pounds, you know, and my testosterone, he said, my, he made the joke, my testosterone level goes down. And, 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 and okay, that, but that's true because uh, music can affect you physically and it can affect you emotionally. And I, I say it can affect you spiritually yeah. as well. So uh, maybe I'm putting you on the spot, but you probably know this. Share with the audience the three parts of, of a song. Well, if I remember correctly, there's, the, uh, there's harmony, melody, and rhythm. Yeah, and okay. of course, the lyrics is in there somewhere, right? Well, yeah, I, and I'm just I'm just speaking about just music in general. But like, okay, you have you have the lyrics uh, in a song, which is the words, the words. Okay, you have the 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 music behind the melody of it. Okay, um, and then also you have like the rhythm. So it's it's almost like spirit, soul, body. It's it's that's a, it's, what I was going to getting yeah. at. Man is a threefold being. There's mm -hmm. something that affects the body, the flesh. Right. Something that affects the, uh, affects the spirit and mm. something that affects the soul. Yeah. But they are different, by the way, the spirit and soul. Right. I mean, threefold being. Right. And uh, we, what we don't want is something affecting the flesh in the wrong way. Not, nothing wrong with affecting the flesh. You know, mm -hmm. the tapping of the foot, that's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you, you can listen to the Star Spangled Banner and, and yeah. tap your foot. It affects yeah. your body in some way. Yeah. But there's, there's things that affect your flesh in the wrong way in, sure, in music. Sure. Well, you know, and, and that's, that's a lot of people talk about, you know, um, drums or whatever, okay? Um, music has a rhythm. If not, you would just sing, you know, uh, amen, you'd hit that note and, and you would never get off that note, okay? Yeah. So there has to be a pacing, there has to be a yeah. timing to a song, and that, that's what the rhythm is. Uh, but when, when any part of that just gets, it's like all rhythm and it's just a, a beat and that's all you feel is a beat, 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 that's fleshly because that affects you physically. Yeah. And, uh, and the problem today is that most modern music, it, it, it has that beat. And all you, you walk away remembering the beat or even the melody, but the message, the words of the song, there's really not that much there. Okay, well, we've, we've gone a little long here, and we've gotten on a music track here, and I, I didn't plan that. Yeah, it's your fault. I'm what sorry. are we, we going <laughs> to discuss in the show coming up? Well, uh, we're going to talk about uh, prophecy, of course, the Laodicean church age, and uh, end times apostasy in the churches. And uh, we can go a number of different directions with that. And uh, so I, I would love to talk about that kind of stuff. That'd okay. be great. So in the show coming up, folks, that's, uh, that's what I've titled it, is the, uh, what did I title it? The, the Times of the Laodiceans. Amen. That's what I titled it. That'd be good. Um, we may, I don't know if, if we're going to do two shows or one. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. But uh, we're going to do a show called The Times of the Laodiceans. Now, Brother Spencer has written a few books we're mainly going to uh, talk about this one. We'll, uh, we're not going to talk about the book, but I'm going to tell you that he has it. Uh, how do they find your materials if they wanted to look at your materials online? Yeah, well, just go. Uh, you go to Amazon. That's available there. Just calling evil good and uh, Spencer Smith, and that'll pull up. And it's, uh, it's a, of course, orange book. Looks like a rock concert. Uh, but calling evil good, the live Christian rock and roll. Is this the name is of actually book. probably a church concert. Well, it might be. I, I can't remember exactly what you that. You probably get is. better better graphics there than you would uh, at the Rolling probably Stones good. website. Probably but, good. Uh, it's a sad day when you can play a death metal concert and a Christian concert on the screen at the same time, and it, it's identical. Yeah, it's sad. It, it, it shouldn't be that sad way to me. Yeah. So, but then again, maybe some people say that's legalism or whatever. But this I, is called Calling Evil Good, The Lie of Christian Rock and Roll mm -hmm. by Spencer Smith. So if you go to Amazon, you can either search his name, Spencer Smith, you'd probably find him. Uh, is there, do you have a website? Yeah, missionaryspencersmith.com. Okay, missionaryspencersmith, all one long word, mm -hmm. dot com. Mm -hmm. um, during the show, we'll have, we'll have Rex put that up. Um, can they find your, your stuff on your website? Uh, no, I, I just had that on, on Amazon. All right, so, and, so you don't uh, even so mention it on your website to tell people not yet. to go there. Not yet. Yeah, you probably ought to do that. 
and uh, put a put a link saying you know to find my book go here yeah and something yeah you're like right. that and uh, all right so you've got a couple of things that you've that you've put out um, yeah we did a, a book called from football to faith which was like a devotional guide. Um, that we dealt with, just some lessons that I learned playing football in high school that are applicable to the Christian life. You look like you might have so, played football. I did. I loved it. Was and, you the whole uh, front line? No, I was. Uh, I was uh, that and Running the linebackers back. and everything. No, I was. I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't fast enough to do that. So, but yeah, we we had a lot of fun with football. Jerome Bettis, Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh man, he that was guy. fun to watch. The, he the, was the bus animal. they called him. Yes, that guy was an yeah. animal, and uh, he. Uh, He's man, that guy was a sweet big. guy, a real, a nice guy. In, in yeah, he really seemed like he yeah. was, really was. Yeah. And so, but uh, the problem was he was a stealer, and that's that's not a good thing. <laughs> that's uh, there's no way you can be right with God and be a Steelers fan. No way. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna we're gonna shut this off, and we're gonna get in a fight back here over <laughs> over the Steelers. Uh, and uh, anyway, well, it's been uh, it's been a good chat. We've gone a little longer than usual, mm -hmm. but that's okay. These these previews we can go as long as we want. Uh, all right, folks, so uh, you can find him at missionaryspencersmith.com or go to, go to Amazon, find his book there. Calling Evil Good is the title of his book about music. Uh, I have not read this yet. I, did, I don't know if you have any extras or if well, I you can have, have that one. I can have this mm -hmm. one. All right. I get, I get something out of this, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, all right, I'm anxious to uh, give, uh. That a, give that a read. So, folks, you can go there, Amazon. Uh, either look for his name, Spencer Smith, or look for the title, Calling Evil Good. Uh, millions of books on Amazon, so you gotta, yeah. you got to search and find what you're looking for there. All right, well, folks, you're watching Protestant Spotlight. This, uh, the show coming up this week on YouTube will be uh, uh, The Times of the Laodiceans. Don't forget, we're also on CTN Television every Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. We're also on Tuesday night at 11 p.m. Eastern Time on CTN. And uh, so tell your, your friends, your moms, your grandmothers, and those that watch TV and have CTN, tell them about that. And uh, remember, we are listener, viewer supported here. So uh, uh, if you'd like to be a part of this ministry, we like to call it partnering with, partnering with us. If you'd like to be a part of this ministry, help us stay on the air. Uh, there's a donate button on the website, prophecyinthespotlight.com. You can donate right there or contact me, and I'd love to uh, talk to you about how you can be a, a part of this thing. Spence, good to have you. Amen. And get ready. We're going we're gonna to get the show going. Until then, keep your eyes on the skies. Amen.